As you become the most high caliber version of yourself, you'll attract more high caliber people and experiences. You won't have to beg low caliber people for high quality behavior that's simply not in their nature. The experiences you have and the way you go through life will completely change. Hi ladies, welcome or welcome back to the feminine universe. I am so happy to have you here. Everyone wants to know what the secret to getting more in life is. People are searching high and low for that one piece of content, that one book, that one affirmation or secret code that will improve the way they live, upgrade their relationships, and get them a slice of the good life. The answer is not as top secret as some make it out to be. How you live your day-to-day -day life, the things you go after, the people you attract, and the treatment you receive are all determined by your standards. Our standards are one of the most overlooked factors in our success, happiness, relationships, and overall life satisfaction. It's crazy that we miss this so often because how you treat yourself, how hard you're willing to push yourself, and the type of people and experiences you're going to tolerate will all be a direct result of the standards you set. As they say, the life you get is determined by the standards you set. So chances are, if there's something that you're unsatisfied with in your life, reevaluating and raising your standards might just be the answer to changing that. So if you're done with the bare minimum and you're ready for more from yourself and from the world, let's get started. Everything I say is always with love, but in order to cover our bases and in case of any misunderstandings, any hurt feelings, or in case anyone is new here, I'll put a quick disclaimer on the screen. With that done, let's jump into step number one, which is to raise your standards for yourself. The first step to raising your standards is understanding that it starts with you. A lot of people seek out standard setting advice as a way to learn how to be harder on others and how to require more from others. But when you truly develop standards, the first person you'll start being harder on is yourself. The first person you'll require more from is yourself. I'm a big believer in quiet power, being so in control of yourself that it affects everything around you. The way you decide to treat yourself, the way you decide to present yourself, and the way you show up in this world begins to communicate your standards way before you ever say a word. I could wax poetic about your fitness routine and your skincare routine and your clothing choices. I could go on and on about looking like you get your sleep and like you eat well, about journaling and the books you read and the way you spend your free time, but I've done that. So what I will do here is just ask you a few questions. Do you look like you have high standards? Do you come off impulsive and easily influenced? Or do you come off confident and self-directed? Do you look like you demand the best from yourself, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially? Do you speak like you demand the best from yourself or like you're at least putting in the effort to become your best? Do you walk into work telling stories about how you went clubbing and got wasted again? Or do you have book recommendations, product recommendations, uplifting words, and sound advice to share? How on earth can you demand someone else's best when you're not giving yourself your best? Why would someone want to give their best to you when you very clearly don't think you're worthy of your own best? Would you lend your luxury car to someone who's constantly crashing theirs? Would you leave your kids with someone whose own kids always look sad, hungry, and unkempt? It's literally the same concept. A lot of people want to be coddled and told, well, you're doing your best, girl, and just be yas queened to death. But the truth is, most people aren't doing anywhere near their best. Remember, you are what you repeatedly do, not what you do once in a while. Most people are functioning at a level four, five, maybe six out of 10, and then demanding eight, nine, or 10 out of 10 from others. And that's what we call entitlement, when you're demanding things you don't deserve or haven't worked for. Once you start telling yourself this truth, you'll no longer be scared of it. And more importantly, you'll be able to do something about it. 
when you realize high standards start with you and you start striving to be your best self in every category, it will instantly do three things. It will start attracting people of a higher caliber to you because they see you as one of them. It will make people put their best foot forward when interacting with you or make them feel like they need to come correct for lack of a better term. And lastly, it will also make you infinitely more comfortable demanding better. If you have a PhD and a company offers you a fast food salary, you're more than comfortable walking away, continuing to look and holding out because you know what what you have is worth. You won't feel like some imposter trying to get more than you deserve. You'll feel like it's within your rights. When you raise your standards, you'll know what you're worth because you'll know exactly how much work you put into yourself. Simply put, when you do better, you attract better. You naturally get comfortable asking for better and you have no problem walking away from anything less than what you want. Step two is to develop self-sufficient energy. As you do better for yourself, do more for yourself, and you start to realize what you're capable of, you'll start to develop what I call self-sufficient energy. Now listen to this closely. I don't want anyone misunderstanding what I'm saying. This phrase is never to be said out loud. Walking around howling, I'm self-sufficient, I don't need anyone, I don't need friends, I don't need a man, it's embarrassing. It's as lame, goofy, and corny as the men who say, I'm the boss, I'm the top dog, I'm the alpha, or whatever other cringy line. If you have to say it, it's because your energy is not transmitting it. This mindset is an energy that's meant to be felt, never said. Okay, so if it's not about puffing out your chest and screaming, I don't need anyone, what does self-sufficient energy look like? Basically, it means having the ability to meet all your basic needs on your own. Not constantly asking friends to spot you for a meal or cab ride. Not going on a date asking them to buy you a second entree so you can have it for lunch tomorrow. Not constantly being short on rent. Self-sufficient energy can also look like going to a place or event you're interested in even if none of your friends want to go. It establishes that someone's presence in your life doesn't dictate whether or not your basic needs are met or whether or not you pursue things that you're interested in. Self-sufficient energy can also look a little different than what you might think. Let's say you're walking to a destination and someone you know is driving by and offers to give you a ride. You graciously accept and so you get there in half the time. You see, in this instance, self-sufficient energy is not about not accepting help. It's about not being helpless. You might have helped me get there faster, but I was on my way. I was going somewhere regardless of whether you showed up or not. A friend may help you get an interview, but you made sure you were educated, professional, and an employable asset, not in the position where you're so underqualified that nowhere else would have hired you. It was this huge favor and now you have to be eternally grateful and supplicant. Self-sufficient energy is about never being completely dependent or unable to get by on your own while being 100% willing to accept help that makes your life easier. Step number three is to stop being impressed by the bare minimum. After you apply the first few steps to your life, this one will start to happen naturally. When you're doing more, seeing more and valuing yourself more when you are doing the absolute most for yourself you're not going to be impressed by someone doing the very least or the bare minimum for themselves or for you the fact that someone wants to pay your phone bill won't have you drooling i'm not saying not to be appreciative you know that's not my style we are always appreciative and gracious but let the appreciation match the gesture some women are out here doing backflips and giving organ donor level appreciation for a phone bill or a meal. It's a steak, not a kidney. You don't trade diamonds for a box of chocolate. And can I just be super frank here for one moment? We're girls, right? When your standards begin to elevate, you're not going to be flattered and impressed that a guy wants to do you. 
you'll be much more interested in what he wants to do for you. It's cute to be wanted and all, but that's not an achievement. While some men have very high standards, many of them would do the lady under the bridge, missing three quarters of her teeth, who's been in the same outfit for the last three years, if no one would find out about it. Let's be honest. And when I say be more interested in what a man wants to do for you, I'm not just talking about material things. Gifts are great, but you'll want a mixture of material things and thoughtfulness. Someone who is actively looking for ways to make your life better, ways to help you. You'll start looking for things that say, I'm thinking about you and I'm interested in you beyond what I can get from you. And not just generic things like flowers and jewelry, which again are beautiful, thoughtful, and always appreciated, but also things that are very specific to you. Things that almost wouldn't really make sense to give to another girl, not copy and paste gifts. You'll want things that say he's clearly paying attention and wants to make your life better. Of course, people will only be able to do what's within their means. You can't squeeze 10 cents out of a nickel, but you're looking for a mixture of material investment as well as mental and emotional investment. It's the same concept for friendships as well. Don't be impressed by the bare minimum. Step four is to create and express your standards. Now, how exactly do you create standards and how do you express them to people? Of course, everyone's standards are going to be a bit different, but there will be some similarities. The first batch of things you can comfortably request are the same standards you hold yourself to. That's more than fair. Then there are a few general areas where you should really focus and get clear on what you want as well. These are areas like effort, communication and honesty, traditionality, ambition and discipline, time and space, and then the gestures and extras. Now, after you've determined your standards in these different areas, you have to figure out how you want to express them. As with all communication, there are direct ways and indirect ways to do so. Now, there are always the righteous Rachels out there that will say, but, 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 communication, but, 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 you should always be direct. They will try to tell you you have to spell everything out or you're doing something wrong. I have to disagree. While many people will say they want this kind of communication, most people actually don't respond well to it. Any psychology or behavioral science book will tell you so. People don't want to be completely in the dark with no idea what you want, but they also don't want to feel like they're being cornered or told what to do. Watch my video on the power of suggestion to understand more about that. There are two times when I'd recommend being super direct. When you know someone pretty well and already have an established relationship, or when someone severely passes their place. But outside of those two scenarios, it is a little bit off-putting. Going on a first date and just stating, I don't tolerate cheating, a guy better not cheat on me, I'm not the one. It's kind of weird. It brings in this negative energy, but also a very presumptive energy. Like it's a first or second date, you're only getting to know each other. You may not even end up dating. Would you randomly say to a new friend, you better not steal anything from my handbag. I don't tolerate thievery. During your first time hanging out with them? Yes, it's direct, but it would be quite strange and a little accusatory. So for some slightly indirect way to still get your standards across loud and clear, try some of these. If someone doesn't meet your standards for whatever reason or in any way, you don't need to shame them or go into detail. You can just say something like, I don't feel like our values, expectations, or lifestyles are aligned, but I wish you all the best. When getting to know people, aim to show more than tell when possible. Realize that the way you put yourself together should begin to convey certain things. Then you can go on to share where you tend to hang out, bring up in conversation what you and your friends like to do, Find a way to talk about your last vacation, maybe with pictures of your stunning views and luxury accommodations, if that's important to you and appropriate to the conversation, of course. It all gives a vibe of what you're used to, what you like to do, and what you probably expect. 
Another way is not to tell people what to do, but rather tell them what you like. So instead of saying, take me somewhere nice, or I expect to be taken somewhere nice, or I don't do burger joints, or I don't like rinky dink restaurants, you can say, I'm such a girly girl. I love dressing up to go out, and I appreciate places with beautiful ambiance. I feel like that always adds to the experience. Or if you're one of my ladies who writes in and talks about how you're always in a uniform and wanting to feel more feminine, you could say something like, I am always in a uniform, so in my free time, I love going to places where I can just get cute and wear my nice dresses. That communicates the kinds of places you like and prefer to go, and it gives them the opportunity to give you what you said you like and to show you that they're listening. Another way is to use their questions as a platform to communicate your standards. So many women miss the opportunity to express their standards when asked things like, what's your type or what type of men do you usually date, etc. Many are still giving these very basic answers like, oh, I like tall guys. Oh, I like guys with muscles or dimples. I like Thor looking thunder god type of guys or I like muscular dark chocolate type of guys that can come across kind of low standards and a bit immature if I may say so. Low standards in the sense that it can indicate that you're already impressed or smitten assuming they have those features that you're mentioning. A little immature because those things tell you nothing about the person and they do nothing for you as a person tells you nothing about how they would treat you and yet you're citing them as the first thing when asked about your type. You can use that time to express actual standards by saying something like, my type is men who treat me well. My type is men who are going after what they want in life, who are happy and content within themselves because I feel like it's so obvious and it spills out in how they deal with everyone else. When someone asks you what's your type, that's such a perfect time to really communicate your standards rather than just superficial things. This doesn't mean you can't have preferences. Everyone has something that tickles their fancy, okay? But those should be the cherry on top, not the main requirements. You first want someone who doesn't cross your boundaries or exhibit any red flags, then who meets your standards, then you look for your preferences, not the other way around. Step five is to remember your standards are for you. You can set your standards however you'd like. Only you know what you need to be happy, but you cannot impose your standards on others. You like your food vegan, organic, raw, practically freshly picked from the dirt or the trees? That's beautiful. But if a friend is in the mood for a burger and fries, you don't stare in disgust commenting, I don't know how you can eat that stuff. Don't shame or try to impose your standards in a passive aggressive way. Just don't be that person. The same goes in reverse. Do not let anyone dictate what your standards should be. If the next girl is waiting for her millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire and nothing else will do, that's great. But if you know you can live well with a thousandaire that loves you, is family oriented and is smart with his money, don't let anyone tell you that that isn't good enough or that you're settling. Your standards are for you. It's about what you need to be happy. And as we talk about not imposing, I do want to touch on the difference between imposing and exposing. Imposing is very aggressively trying to force your way onto others, usually by trying to shame them. Exposing is about introducing people to different ideas and to what's possible while still respecting their ultimate decision. And the last step is to remain steadfast. I also call this being okay with being put back. By this I mean being put back on the shelf. We've all done it. You pick up something in a store because it looks kind of cute. Then you look at the price tag and you're like, nope, I'm good. It can be because you can't afford it, or you could but you don't think it's worth the amount they're asking for it, so you set it back down. Sometimes you've barely set it down and someone is already on your back swooping in to grab it, almost like they were watching you just hoping you'd set it down. 
Maybe they know it's the last of its kind. Maybe it's the exact color and style they've been looking for. Whatever the reason, they are thrilled they found it and they are more than happy to pay the asking price. That same price that you thought was too much or wasn't worth it. My point here is there will be people who think you're too much or that you aren't worth it. That's okay. As one of our favorite quotes in this community goes, if I'm a lot, feel free to go find less. Someone telling you you're too much is great. They realize they can't afford you and that's fine. It's honest and you both can move on. But what I do want to point out is that some people will never have the courage to tell you that they don't think you're worth it. And instead, they'll try to haggle with you or shame you or otherwise waste your time. While they may not always tell you they don't think you're worth it, I do believe they will always show you. Whether it's that friend who never calls unless they need something and never reciprocates, that man who has never asked you to meet anyone in his circle, or the one who's introduced you to everyone as a ruse so he can string you along for seven years. Anyone who grumbles or keeps score of every little thing they do for you. Listen, anyone whose actions don't match their words or whose behavior leaves a lot to be desired doesn't think you're worth it or they have some kind of personality issue. Either way, the actions and the words not matching up is your sign to stop wasting your time and leave that alone because there is someone hoping for a friend like you. There is someone praying for a wife like you. There is a company searching for an asset like you. And not only will they be willing to pay full price, they will be happy to pay full price. Remember, all you need is one. Too many people, women especially, are concerned that raising their standards will scare people away. That's kind of like being concerned your alarm system will scare burglars away or that your gated community will keep the riffraff out. <laughs> That's kind of the point. Don't be worried about scaring away people who are bad for you or who don't think you're worth what you want. Set your standards, stick to your standards, and express your standards proudly. You'll be surprised who will be willing to rise up and meet them. So raise those standards for yourself, raise your standards for who and what you accept in your life, and watch your entire world change. Until next time, ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.